Good afternoon, everyone. Many articles coming out suddenly about suppression of science. NOAA trying to gag order its meteorologists talking about natural cycles. NASA doing the same muzzling of alternative opinions. Senior members of parliament ridiculed by the BBC for even asking about natural cycles. And a quick jump onto Google. Scientists with published papers about natural cycles, 1.5 million scientists who publish papers citing CO2 as the driver for climate change, 17.3 million. I was told 97% consensus. That math shows something entirely different. NASA caught fudging data to show warming trends from 1940 to the year 2000. It's a rundown of University at Huntsville, Alabama satellite measurement temperatures against RSS and NASA. Oh, a little bit different. And using basalt rock dust to boost plant yield. A look at the real hockey shtick right here. Cost of electricity and food going straight through the roof. A suppression of alternative views on global cooling and solar minimums were not even being discussed in the media. And it was such a non-point. We shouldn't find half a million articles on it. Digging into the depths about the suppression of science. David Dilley, former NOAA meteorologist, gives a full account of his personal experience having speaking engagements and when talking about natural cycles were canceled and he also talks about how other researchers lost grants and remained unpublished global cooling cycles on every 230 years which is very close to john casey's 207 years enlargement of the temperature forecast also nasa researchers muzzled filtering public statements and press interviews in order to limit the ability to convey this type of information. And this is Dr. James Hansen. And if you thought it was just those researchers that have affiliation with research organizations or with universities, stop right there. We're getting into the mainstream media now. BBC even getting on the bandwagon, issuing an apology for giving a voice to a climate skeptic simply asking about natural variability through climate cycles that have repeated in the past. Scientists publishing natural cycle variability, climate change, 1.49 million. Those scientists publishing papers citing CO2 as the climate driver, 17.3 million. Wait, I was told 97% of all scientists concurred that CO2 was causing climate change. You can do the math yourself on that one. Case in point, the most ridiculous article I've ever seen, I think, in the, since I've been doing these 100 videos, Antarctic is melting so fast, the whole continent could be at risk by 2100. Ooh, another 100 year in the future, scary scenario. Why is Antarctic sea ice at record levels last year, continuing the trend of building ice this year, when these guys are talking about such ice loss. Ian Plymer sums it up. The climate stubbornly refuses to cooperate with our computer models. True. Svensmark, another name you may or may not have heard of. He is the foremost leader about cosmic rays causing more lower cloud formation, which reduces the temperature by reflecting sunlight and also allowing for more snowfalls on the ground, which also reflects more sunlight. And I'll direct you right to the cloud mystery. Start with that one first and see what's not being told to you in the media. Cycles are natural. This is a look at 1921 to 1938. Look at the ice loss there. And it rebounded just like it's doing today. If we do take a look at the RSS temperature anomaly, which you really can't rely on so much because it's basically NASA data, it still shows a cooling trend. And all this hype about, ooh, there were going to be more hurricanes and massive hurricanes that'll destroy every square inch of a coastline. Wait a second. The water must be getting cooler so the hurricanes are not forming or the latitude of winds has moved a little bit because of cooler conditions. And that CO2 global warming camp 
Trump will have you believe that there is no scientist that's even talking about Earth's climate cooling yet. I found 1.2 million articles. Temperature follows solar output. I'll take you back to 1979 here on this magazine. Science and Mechanics, 35 cents for a magazine. Talking about an ice age is imminent. Scientists at that time were predicting cooling as well. And then we got into this ultra solar maximum that staved that off for a few years. Picture of 1947 in New York, two feet of snow. Check out this site, Climatism. This site has links to thousands of articles referencing suppressed science, global cooling, solar cycles, solar variability. And if the science really wasn't being suppressed, why are there more than half a million articles stating that it is being? And we come out with top scientists, even those in the IPCC themselves that have resigned or been fired, have these to say. You can pause the screen. The worst scientific scandal in history. A blatant lie. Climate change issues about to fall apart. Talking about fraudulent data. NOAA and NASA noticed the temperature. The red line below was the original temperatures that were recorded. The blue line is the updated version. And to take a little further step back in time, we'll take a look at NASA temperatures from 1930 to the year 1995, showing a downtrend of almost half a degree. Yet the new updated temperature measurements show that it's actually warmed since then. And how did that temperature get flipped from cooling into warming unless it was purposeful? Bob Tisdale, another interesting site you would want to take a look at about temperature data manipulation. And he does an incredibly good job of pointing out these things. UAH is University of Huntsville, Alabama. RSS is Remote Sensing Systems, and that's an extension arm of NOAA. That RSS temperature is showing three times temperature difference than UAH is. These temperature data sets are a series of satellites with similar but not identical sensors. So how can it be that far off? And with all of this, Obama puts pressure on Kenya to cut carbon emissions. Kenya. This is a level it's going to, to suppress developing economies based on carbon emissions. So what are they supposed to not do? They're not supposed to drive automobiles to deliver goods, medicines, and foods into the villages. They're not supposed to build any power plants because they should burn wood or they should burn candles for lighting sources. Should they not have hospitals that need generators? This is a copy-paste across all developing nations. Having them cut their carbon emissions, which mean limit their development potential. Yet the Western nations continue, expand the economy, build and sell new automobiles, expand airports. Yet they ask these smallest of countries with the smallest of GDP across our planet not to develop and still live in the Stone Age. All based on a little tiny trace gas in the atmosphere that has basically no effect on our atmosphere in terms of warming. And I'll leave you with a nice article on experimentation using basalt rock dust as a source of natural nutrients for plants. It's basically ground up granite into microfine powder that you just sprinkle on the ground and you mix it in at a certain ratio. You should see the results of the vegetables that are supposedly ungrowable in regions where they're using this particular method right now. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, Adapt2030. Pass this through your social media, and I will keep these stories coming to you.